Good morning and welcome to your Fox 31 Morning News. It is Friday, July 27th. I'm Abby Burke in for Kimberly Price. And I'm Andrew Ald Stuck at a standstill. That's how one homeowner describes his current battle to rebuild his home after the Waldo Canyon fire. 199, <laughs> 1000, 1001. She's still going, folks. Look at this. The music. The music, keep it going. It's, it's pumping me up. I love this music. I feel so, I feel, do you feel good? I feel great. Oh, holy cow. Yeah. I didn't realize like what there, I was grabbing on there. There's actually muscle there. That's, you need tickets for this. Huge. The gun show. Wow. There you go. Kiss the guns. <laughs> <laughs> Only a couple hours separating us now. Never turn your back on a shark, not necessarily because it'll eat you, but it might steal your gear. And really, who's going to try and stop it? Jeannie Mose has a fish story about the shark that got away with the camera. No, you just need lots and lots of rubber bands. And lots of time. Yeah, that's right. Two guys <laughs> set out on a mission of cutting a watermelon open by wrapping hundreds of rubber bands around it. Take a look at what happened. Good morning. Welcome to Fox 21 Morning News. It is Thursday, July 26th. I'm Abby Burke in for Kimberly Price. And I'm Eddie Rogers. We're learning more about Matthew Tyner, the Colorado Springs police officer killed in a motorcycle crash Tuesday afternoon while on duty. In other news, downtown business is picking up after a number of stores closed and moved out of the downtown core. Bing, bong, bing, bong, boom. Where did you get that? Someone sent this to me because I was talking <laughs> about how I wanted a triangle. And I really wanted like one of the that triangles in, in band. You know, you had the mm -hmm. triangle. Grown-ups looking for some fun at the zoo after dark. Moonlight on the Mountain is back. And we are giving away a pair of tickets to the August 2nd event. You can call it a date night. No kids allowed. If you want to win, log on to fox21news.com and click on the contest page before July 29th to register. Good luck. Twilight star Kristen Stewart fesses up and asks for forgiveness. Still ahead, we'll tell you what she did and who is affected by her mistake. I mean, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, my favorite. What's your favorite? Ooh. Oh, I don't know now. Don't say Heath Bar, please. No, oh, no. Thank you, good. I'm not Maybe a Heath like Bar Oreo. Fan. Okay, that's good. That, uh, that's acceptable. I'll accept that. <laughs> that, that you can stick around. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bing, bong, bing, bong, boom. You want to do it? I do. You're so good. That was very good. I was a master I never triangle Kimberly, I never let no, Kimberly touch. The governor comes to Manitou Springs to check out the damage left behind by recent floods and thank those who helped clean up the mess. Plus, the flood danger isn't just on the west side of Colorado Springs. The east side can see dangerous flooding, too. And a scary scene as police track down a kidnapping suspect and rescue an eight-month-old boy. Now, live, Southern Colorado's only National Edward R. Murrow Award winner. This is Fox 21 News at 9. Governor John Hickenlooper comes to Southern Colorado to assess the damage left behind from recent flash floods. Good evening, everyone. I'm Abby Burke. And I'm Joe Cole. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. The governor arrived in Manitou around 6.30 tonight. And city leaders took him on a tour of the devastated area. In tonight's top story, Fox 21's Jeff Womack toured the area with the governor. He joins us now live with more. Jeff? The man accused of robbing a Pueblo bank earlier this month has been arrested in Denver. Floyd Dodds was arrested yesterday morning. He's accused of robbing the U.S. bank near North Elizabeth and Highway 50 in Pueblo. That robbery took place back on August 5th. A sexually violent predator is changing his address in Colorado Springs. 29-year-old Rayshawn Falcone has moved to 3033 East Platte Avenue. He's been convicted of attempted sexual assault, false imprisonment, escape attempted, and failure to register as a sex offender. Police say he was accused of attempted sexual assault against a 17-year-old girl. He remains under probation. Colorado elections administrators say most voters will have to cast ballots in person in next month's legislative recall elections. The state has rewritten election procedures because of a judge's ruling this week, giving third-party candidates more time to qualify for ballots. The ruling means that the legislative recalls for Democratic Senators Angela Harone and John Morse won't be all-male. Instead, the counties will have to open voting centers and voters will have to request emergency ballots if they can't get to the polls. Woodman Hills Elementary School was a standout, scoring higher than 90% proficient and advanced in fourth grade reading and in third and fourth grade math. Congratulations to those kids. Yeah, good job for them. A young victim of the Aurora Theater shooting is still smiling even after becoming paralyzed. Uh, we're going to bring you this remarkable story at 927 as Fox 21 News at 9 continues. Plus at 943, a wild police chase leads to the recovery of a kidnapped baby. Then at 949, we'll show you how to save some cash on back-to-school shopping. 
But first, coming up after the break. More chaos in Egypt, the anniversary of troop withdrawal in Vietnam, and albino alligator acupuncture in Brazil. Those stories and more making headlines around the world. Scientists in Hawaii and Istanbul creating glow-in-the-dark rabbits. A team of international researchers successfully injected fluorescent jellyfish proteins in rabbit embryos and then placed them back into the mother rabbit. When the litter was born, two of the rabbits carried the glowing gene, allowing them to glow green when placed in the dark. Now, the pair is not the first glow-in-the-dark bunnies produced in a lab, but they were the first using this technique. And if you're wondering why you would want glow-in-the-dark bunnies like me, researchers say it could lead to efficient ways to produce medicines for humans down the line. Joe and Terry? Well, so at least there's a good cause. Otherwise... Yeah, I was wondering. I had the same question. Well, yeah, because otherwise yeah. kids be asking for glowing bunnies for Easter. <laughs> right. Like today, you're going to like tomorrow and even better coming up on Saturday. We'll get to a week's worth coming up at 9.39. That sounds good to me. Joe was so excited he was jumping back to the desk. Leaping around. Hopping, things. yeah. Leaping and hopping like a bunny, but, yeah. but not a glow in the dark. Bunny. No, I was not <laughs> glowing just as of yet. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Terry. Thanks, Terry. On the weekend alternative from the Colorado Springs Independent, this Friday and Saturday nights, you can join in the grand opening celebration for the new Ivy Wild School. Yeah, the new community marketplace, which runs from 2 p.m. Friday through late Night Saturday ends with a John Hughes inspired 80s back to school dance in the gym. <laughs> also on Saturday, the Colorado Springs Diversity Forum presents the Cotton Club, a retro themed affair celebrating Fannie Mae's Duncan's version of the legendary Harlem venue. The free event gets underway at 8 p.m. at Stargazers Theater and Event Center. You're going to be at that one, aren't you? I am. And on Sunday, you may want to check out the 22nd annual Good Times Car Show in Old Colorado City. The event is packed with nearly 400 autos. The free event runs from 9 a.m. until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, that's good stuff. Well, if you're trying to improve your sleep with exercise, you better get into a routine. Yeah, results from a new study are still to come in tonight's Fox 21 Healthy Living. And a paralyzed victim of the Aurora movie theater shooting talks about how he is keeping a positive outlook on life. We're going around Colorado next. A veterinarian has been cited for practicing medicine on humans without a license after a man said he had to have three toes amputated because of improper care. Police say the man had gone to the vet with a foot ailment and the vet gave him some ointment. The problem got worse and he went to a hospital. The vet telling police he was treating a dog for skin cancer and the person who owned the dog took some of the medicine and gave it to a neighbor without his knowledge. They may have only one playoff win in the last 17 years, but the Dallas Cowboys are the kings of the hill when it comes to overall worth in the NFL. Yeah, they are. See how the other teams stack up, including the Broncos. That's later in tonight's business news. And one summer camp is offering obese kids a chance to learn how to live a more healthy life. Fox 31's Healthy Living is coming up next. Big retailers issuing warnings, but good news for college kids this year. Fox's Cheryl Cassoni has more from the day in business. Well, how about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys are bringing in more cash than any other NFL team. The franchise tops Forbes' list of the most valuable NFL teams for the seventh year in a row. The team is worth $2.3 billion. New England Patriots take the second spot, worth $1.8 billion, followed by the Washington Redskins at $1.7 billion, the New York Giants at $1.5 billion, and the Houston Texans at $1.4 billion. The Broncos come in at number 13 on the list of 32 teams. Value at $1.16 billion. We have a behind-the-scenes tour of the area causing all of the recent flood problems in Manitou Springs. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Abby Burke. A collaborative partnership between federal, state, and local agencies to restore the watershed in the Waldo Burn area continues. Fox 31's John Martin shows us the efforts being made in tonight's top story. The 18,000-acre burn scar is expected to cause flooding concerns for the next 10 years. A really nice day as we head into the weekend. Terry has more in the Fox Fastcast. Terry? Looks pretty good tomorrow. As a matter of fact, the weekend looks pretty toasty. We'll have those details coming up in about 18 minutes. Toasty. You know I like toasty. that. Yeah, you do. And I'm <laughs> just trying to make you happy. All right. Thanks, Terry. Well, firefighters say a wildfire burning southeast of Glenwood Springs is fully contained. A chaotic scene in Denver this afternoon as police take down an active shooter. A man suspected of killing a woman and wounding another is in critical condition after he fired a gunshot at a propane tank he was carrying and was shot by Denver police. Police Chief Robert White says officers fired after the man shot his gun at the tank to cause an explosion. Police are still investigating the motive. 
We have some good news for you tonight. Ivy Wild School is officially open. The repurposed elementary school and new home of Bristol Brewing Company hosted its grand opening this afternoon and celebrated with live music, cake, and of course, beer. An 86-piece marching band from Palmer High School and a 24-foot sausage ribbon cutting helped to kick off the celebrations. And how about a bite to eat at the Pestaurant? It's a new restaurant in London featuring some unconventional meals. On the menu, salt and vinegar crickets, roasted scorpions, barbecue mealworms, and even pigeon burgers. Many folks came in open-minded and the general consensus of the taste, crunchy. What do you think about that, Terry? <laughs> All I can say is I'm glad I already had dinner. I'm really not all that hungry right now, <laughs> right? to tell you the truth. Yeah, just, uh, nothing grabs me right there. I'll go to the next restaurant. <laughs> hey, it was hot out there or warm out there today. It'll be hot over the weekend. We'll get to those temperatures after this. So more monsoon moisture is in the forecast, but we're looking good tomorrow and at least part of Sunday before that trickles back into the area. We'll talk more about that coming up in about 15 minutes. So it sounds like you can get at least one more pool day in this weekend. I'd say probably tomorrow and at least a part of Sunday. Okay. So a day and a half. Sounds good. Call up my friends with pools. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Terry.